back to the IT world of Shri Vashish Vidyalaya. Today, in this second session of chapter number six, Internet Ethics and Safeguard. Now, we'll continue with the next topic, and the next topic is spam. Now, as you can see, spam is a folder or a place in your email account, right? It is also known by a name, a uh, junk, right? So, if there is a folder named junk in your email then it is also known as spam now what is spam and why is it there let us see more on it so moving on to spam email spam is also known as junk mail as i said right it involves sending unwanted messages by spammer i mean this spammer who is a spammer is a person who sends unwanted messages to us right and to a large number of recipients means he broadcasts that message broadcast in the sense he just uh, uh, keeps it on the internet and gives it to various i mean uh, to various email ids right it is a separate box that is a place or a section in your mail id which can be used to deliver emails that contain viruses and targeted attacks generally spam is a box wherein the uh, virus uh, detected mails or the virus infected mails are being kept or actually uh, they are uh, automatically being taken into that folder uh, by say the email service provider that is say for example gmail yahoo already right so if they think that is an unwanted mail or if you think a mail in your inbox is in unwanted you can keep it in spam or you can move it in spam the next thing is it is aimed at obtaining sensitive personal information now once you click on that particular mail that is the spam mail it might contain virus and Yes, there are 100% chances of it containing viruses and uh, that virus can enter into your computer stealing away your personal information even without your knowledge from the browsers whatever you have browsed. It is a common trick by spammers to get their email to pass through spam filters without detection. Now children see what is spam filter. It is a kind of firewall, a filter which comes along with the antivirus program. Right. So if you have installed an antivirus program, you are safe. But as we have learned earlier, no antivirus in the world is 100% safe. So once you open this spam mail and click on the attachment or even click on this email, right? So the spammers or that person who has sent this mail gets an access to your computer and he may steal your personal information. Moving on to the next slide. Now what precautions can we take against these kind of spam mails? Right. Number one, sign up for email filtering through your ISP or use an anti-spam program. Now, what do you mean by signing up an email filtering? It is a setting or it is a security given by your ISP internet service provider. Right. So you can either uh, pay for it and you can ask the ISP for the not sending or not forwarding those mails because you are taking internet. Right. So, sorry, you are having the, those Wi-Fi connections at your house. So, you can ask your ISP not to forward those messages, right? Or use an anti-spam program. There are such programs which are available. Do not click links in spam or reply to spam for any reason. Now, for any reason, do not click on that mail. It might contain a virus and your computer might get infected. If you suspect an email is a spam, do not respond, just delete it, right? It is very dangerous. If you open it, your personal information might get leaked. Keep your security software up to date. Say for example, antivirus software. It should be up to date. That is, you should update it every now and then in order to protect from spams. The next topic, phishing. Now, it is not like that phishing. It is phishing, right? The word is different. It is a scam uh, or a scandal you can say in which you will receive an official or legitimate looking email message that attempts to obtain your personal and or financial information. Now what does that person do? As you can see in this picture, the person sitting at the other end is a spammer or a fisher, right? He is a person who has like who asks for you that he is from a bank and he, the bank is asking to verify your login id password your otp 
your uh, debit card account number everything everything so please don't share such things no banks in the world ask for any personal information either telephonically or via email right so number two these messages look legal and request you to update your credit card numbers bank account numbers passwords or or other private information as i said you should not update any information by such messages right the third one these scam can be executed via email messages websites or even on the phone there are certain persons who calls you those are known as tele callers these spammers or uh, these persons what they do they call you they ask you that they are calling from a certain organization or a bank and ask your personal information if you provide them they hack it and steal away your money or any other legal documents so moving further now what precautions should we take against such phishing attacks the first one do not reply to any email asking you any kind of verification or financial information clear the second thing do not disclose personal or financial information to caller asking or claiming to you to be from a legitimate company or bank legitimate means legal company or bank they might ask you sir i am calling from so and so company you are having certain things certain funds in our company please share your personal information never ever do that please verify it and then only share it never click on suspicious links even if it is from a known source now if you think that this link should not be sent from your known source known source means your person who is your friend your family member or anyone right he or she should not if he or she should not send such information then please don't click on it keep it in a spam folder right or a junk mail and then ask that person call him or her and then verify it and then only open that mail type the correct address of the bank website while visiting as visiting wrong website might leak your personal and sensitive information in wrong hands children as i said uh if you are browsing and you write the wrong name of your bank right or the wrong website address url that is known as uniform resource locator it might take you to a phishing website wherein all your details can be leaked and copied right so you cannot do anything thereafter enable phishing filter in your browser warn or block you from suspicious websites right there is a phishing filter in your browser nowadays the browsers are up to date sorry if you update your browsers then there is nearly no problem against this phishing attacks right so moving on to the next slide and the next topic virus now children you all have learned in the previous chapter what is a virus let us revise it from this topic the first thing virus what is the full form of virus it stands for vital information resource under seas right so your vital information is or resources under seas means they are being captured illegally by a programmer a person who is known as virus author they are programs that are deliberately made or developed intended to damage our our data or information the next point they are not generated by chance but are programs with a motive to damage data or programs residing in the computer as i said and the programmer of a virus is known as virus author the next point writing a virus program requires significant programming skills so now the next topic precautions against computer virus now children as i had already we had already learned that there is no antivirus in this world who can protect you or no program in this world which can protect your computer 100% right as newer and newer virus definitions are being invented are sorry are being developed so new and new antivirus the, the signatures or uh, antivirus definitions have to be developed again and again but it takes time right so 100% protection is not possible still some precautions are there the first amongst which is we should not start our computer with a removable device such as a flash drive cd or dvd if it contains virus then what will happen the virus will enter into our computer the next thing never open an email attachment you are not expecting or one from an unknown source right we have already learned if your friend unexpectedly sends you an email like phishing in what we had learned in the previous topic with an attachment verify it and then only open 
it number 4 never trust an email message or websites that asks you to update or confirm sensitive information such as your bank account number credit card number details account number etc etc right and bear that in mind no legal or legitimate company can will call you ever to con or contact you via email or telephonically to update your bank details or personal details right moving on to the next topic sorry uh, further with precautions against computer the next point is always download software and files from trusted websites never ever go for free softwares generally and if you are going make sure that website is safe for your computer for browsing right install a licensed antivirus program on all your computers and update its virus signatures regularly stay alert for all kinds of virus and hoaxes we had already learned right we should have the knowledge that yes there are certain viruses which are again coming we should uh, look for the it magazines we should go for the it news and we should be updated with the it with the viruses and it field. scan all downloaded programs for viruses and other malware now as we know and as i had taught you the moment you download a program scan it with a licensed antivirus so that your pc might not be infected with a virus right so moving on to the next slide the next topic is keyloggers and precautions against it what is a keylogger now children keylogger is or key stroke logging is a type of a software what does it do it gets installed very easily and often found on public computers public computers means if you are visiting cyber cafe most probably public computers are termed i mean cyber cafe computers are termed as public computers wherein many public or many people can uh, many people visit it records keystrokes you may uh, make to enter the data in the computer in a hidden file see children many times i might have told you you should not uh, do online shopping while you are on a public computer like in a cyber cafe right your uh, data might be uh, stolen so this is what it is it can be stolen with key logger now what does this software do the amount the number of keystrokes you do suppose you type your bank account number then it will record the numbers which you have typed but in a file which is hidden you won't be know knowing it even uh, without your knowledge it will record all the keystrokes what you had done even sorry may it be capital letter small letter any space bar any special character and then we uh, the person can come to know about your personal information so never ever do any such personal or financial information sorry uh, transactions uh, through public computers now what precautions should we take the first one is we should avoid checking your email or performing banking activities on public computers online payments and all should not be done through public computers i know you are well aware well aware about it you might be doing it from your personal phones or from your personal laptops or pcs but there are many people who still don't know about it so you should guide them these computers may be running key loggers which record keystrokes in a hidden file and other tracking software as i said the next point next precaution if you use a public computer for critical activities critical means uh, your personal work such as payment and all bill payments and all be certain to sign out aap jo bhi website whatever website you are visiting you must sign out properly and you must clear the its history the browsing history which you have visited see what is the meaning i mean what uh, help does it do why by uh, clearing the browsing history it uh, uh, deletes all the tracks of the rec and records of the websites visited by you so the keylogger or the person who has installed that keylogger software will not be able to track your personal data uh, very easily right so that's it for now i hope you have understood all the topics stay tuned for more such topics till then Goodbye and stay safe